Have you ever wondered how you get that iridescent shimmer that you sometimes get on a dragonfly's wings in your own art projects? Well, let me show you how. So I realised that I hadn't done a mixed media canvas for such a long time. So I thought I would do one today. So all the casts that you can see in front of you all come from, um, I think it's just three bar one or two little items. Um, so just come from three moulds. So these are the moulds. So the first one is Iron Orchid Designs and this one's the Acanthus. So that's these big swirly kind of ones at the bottom here that are almost like a big handlebar moustache. The big Baroque swirls in the background there are from Prima. They're a redesign and they're called Baroque swirls, as you can see on the packaging, which I wish you could see better on the Iron Orchid design one, but that's, you know, well, it is what it is. Um, and the other, the three, the butterfly and the moth and the dragonfly all come from this one. Again, it's a Prima redesign. Um, apparently somebody called CC Restyled. Sounds like a pop star from the 1970s. Uh, but this one's called Insecta and Stars, which is where the stars have come from. Um, so I took the opportunity while I was doing a load of casting for Ian for his steampunk show this weekend um, to do some for me too, or also my grandma's terrible today. <laughs> my grandma's terrible today. <laughs> uh, anyway, so those are the moulds. Those are the casts already done. That's the composition that I kind of want to do. So what I need to do is I need to take a photograph of that, a detailed photograph of that, so I know where everything is. Um, the canvas size is, he says, it's a 8-ish by 10, 8 by 10. It'll probably see underneath there. I've not taken the cellophane off the top of it yet. Um, it's an 8 by 10 um, box frame. So it's not a deep one, it's only maybe just about an inch deep. So I need to do a load of photos, make sure I've got everything, know where everything's going, and then I can start sticking it all down. I'm going to be using my hot glue gun, um, mainly because I don't think I've got enough heavy body gel left in which to do it. So I'm going to use my hot glue gun um, because it's just going to be quicker and easier for me to do it that way. So... I'm going to do all the photography, stick everything down, or as best I can, and then I'll be right back. So before gluing anything down on that, I decided to add some texture paste just across the canvas itself. All I used was the Indigo Blue Junk and Disorderly True Grit through a 12x12 quatrefoil stencil that I've had for ages and ages and ages. In fact, I've had it so long that I couldn't even tell you where I got it from. Um, it may have been a purchase that I did when I was away on holiday one year, a trip into Michael's or whatever it was, Joanne's or wherever. Um, but it was definitely not from this from this country. It wasn't from the UK. I can tell you that much. Um, so yeah, I, I've only ever used it once before um, in nearly 10 years. So I thought it was time to use it again. So quarterfoil with structure paste or texture paste, gritty texture paste, all the way across. So I'll let that dry first and then I can add all those bits. I've discovered there was some of the gel medium left. Just a little bit. So enough for me to do on just the smaller items. So that, apart from the actual butterflies and dragonflies and stuff is that. It's been a couple of hours now, so everything is dry. Uh, all the pieces I did manage to stick down with the remnants of that heavy duty gel have now stuck beautifully. So before I stick on my dragonflies and insects, I want to paint the whole of the canvas 
in black. Um, the whole idea for this, the name for the canvas that I'd thought about was Nocturne. So I wanted it to be a kind of, um, have a night feel. Um, I know dragonflies and butterflies don't come out at night, but moths do, but you know, insects. Artistic license and all that. So I've got some black gesso. So this is indigo blues black gesso. And I'm going to go around <clears throat> and I'm going to cover the entire canvas and all of the pieces in a couple of coats of black gesso. So this will take, you know, quite some time. So what I'll do, because it's just literally putting down black paint all over, making sure that everything is covered. Um, and like I said, it will probably take two coats to do. My goodness, the dogs are active this morning. What are you two doing? Give up. What are you doing? Chasing each other around the house. They're both at the Zoomies today for some strange reason. One, yes, but not both, usually. <laughs> both very hyperactive. Mind you, we did have a long walk this morning, so that's probably what's got their energy levels up. You'd have thought by now they'd be tired, but... <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, digressing, talking about the puppies, um, yeah, I need to make sure I've got a couple of decent coats that everything's covered. I'm going to check it from each and every angle. So I'll lift it up and I'll turn it and keep turning it to make sure that... Are you driving on Teddy? Poor thing. Um, to make sure that I haven't missed any. So with the idea of it being nocturne, um, I'm going to stick to a very cold dark palette so we're going to have um blacks we're going to have dark blues and we're going to have silvers and we're going to have whites i haven't done uh, a canvas which um i suppose a, a, an accurate description or an easy description um a canvas that's had like the white dry brushed what i call the frosting I haven't done one of those for an absolute age and a half. So I thought I would do that today. Okay, so now that I've got my waffling and my rambling out of the way, I'll carry on with the canvas. Like I said, I'll probably either put it on fast forward or I'll jump to the end, depending on how long the video is going to be in the end. I'll only know in the edit. <laughs> so you're either going to get music or you'll just see me finishing the end of the first coat. All right, so first coat done. So as I'm looking at it and tilting it, I can see there's lots of little areas where I've missed. So this is the reason why it's a good idea to, to give it multiple coats and to turn it from every angle that you possibly can to make sure that you've kind of got in as many of those areas where you may have missed. And you can always tell because they're lighter colours. <laughs> It's easy to spot a white spot when, when you're painting with black. And sometimes, you know, your brush bristles are too big to get in. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly go over those places where I definitely have seen that I've missed. And then once I've done all those spots, I'll give it a try. And then I'll come back again and give it another coat. So rather than make you sit through all that, I'll just come back when I'm ready to move on to that next stage. I can't really say fairer than that, can I? 
Right, so that's had a couple of coats. Now, I'm not going to get everywhere, but one of the things that I have um, found when using any kind of gesso is that if you've got it on to like resin items like this or onto texture paste or whatever, structure paste, um, and you paint it with either white or black gesso or any kind of acrylic paint, and then you dry it with a heat gun, um, you will get some bubbling or you will get some cracking of the paint because it will heat up the stuff that's underneath. So you will get a little bit of extra cracking or bubbling. So anyway, so that canvas is done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away and I'm going to paint all three of my insects in the black gesso in readiness for sticking them down. So I'm going to put my canvas to one side and then just bring those in and then we'll just grab a brush. I'm only going to use a small brush for this because they are only smallish items. There we go. And I'm just going to go around and give probably each piece two coats, just like I did with the canvas. Obviously trying to get <laughs> all of it covered. And then, and then I'll be right back. While the gesso is drying on the insects, I want to add kind of like the first base coat um, to the canvas. So what I've got is a mixture of some black and blue paints here. I'm just create some space over this side here with a paint mat. There we go. So I have indigo blue translucent acrylic paint called In the Navy, which is a really dark blue. I've got Americana Deco Arts Williamsburg blue, which isn't too dark. It's a little bit lighter, but I will be mixing that with some black gesso. But I've also got a tub of metallic black paint as well. So I'll start off with that In the Navy. Now I know it's translucent, so um, it will need to be mixed with a little bit of something else. So I've got the black gesso back again. So let me just lift some of that translucent paint off the lid and put that down just so you can kind of get a feel for the colour there. And then just grab another brush, pick up some of the black. I'll leave that out and then I'm going to mix to make a real dark kind of midnight black and then I'm going to just start dabbing around in the background and then just spritz with a little water just to kind of get it a bit loose, get some of that colour moving in the background. Like I said, I want subtle tones in the background. I don't just want it to be complete kind of like matte black. So adding other colours into the background will work, even though they're going to be very subtle. And I wish my spritzer bottle would not stick all the time. You'd think, as soon as it's just water, <laughs> that it wouldn't. There we go. Get it a bit wetter. Predominantly kind of like want it sort of in the background. And again, let's add some water. I 
I'm just gonna let it kind of like do its thing. I could just take some of the in the navy on its own. and then bluish tones in the background. That's it, it's now starting to sort of move around the canvas a little bit and you can just pick up those kind of like blue tones let that run one way and then turn it and let it run back Maybe just a little bit more. Maybe up there on that scallop shell detail. And just a little bit, just for a bit of movement. There we go. Just takes that stark blackness away with but still keeps that kind of dark feel to it okay so i'll get the brushes washed up get the paint popped away clean my mat and get that dried off and then i'll be back once i've just encouraged it to move a little bit more the first layer of color is dry you just see the kind of subtle blue tones in the background which is fine so now i want to stick on my insects. So I've got my glue gun which is primed and ready to go. So I'm just going to add a little blob just there. This isn't really going to need a huge amount of glue. Just want to make sure that I've got it just in the position that I want it. Okay, so now the moth at the bottom, and I'm not worried about those strings either, because they can just be melted away at a later date. Now add a little bit of glue to the back of the moth. Which will go down here at the bottom, just like so. There is still a bit of water on the canvas, but I'm not worried about that. I've got it from the top bit, so that's fine. And then the butterfly, a fair whack on the back of that. This is an incredibly hot glue gun that Ian bought me for Christmas. Last year or yeah, the year before. So that just give that a little bit of a squeeze. There we go. So that's all of the pieces now stuck down. If I hold the canvas up like that, you should be able to see. I seem to have wiped off a little bit of the gesso, but hang on. Okay, so give that time to cool down. Also give me time to make a cup of coffee. Okay, so I've given it enough time to dry. I did have to add a little bit more adhesive just underneath the mosquito, mosquito, <laughs> the dragonfly's tail, just to, Get it to um, to be a bit more stable. 
So now it's time to start adding some more of that colour. So I'm at that point now where I'm thinking, well, I really, really like the canvas, um, but I don't want to ruin it. So I'm having that kind of like crisis of confidence as far as colour is concerned. But I really shouldn't be because it's going to be one of those cases of, well, if I don't like it and I think it's rubbish, I can just paint over the top of everything and start again. So I'm going to take a blob of that Williamsburg blue and a little bit of the black and then we're going to mix it together to create a darker blue. So more of a grey. So like I said, if I don't like it, I can always add um, more to it. So let's take some more black and then mix that in. So we're getting more towards a dark grey now, bluey grey. If I want to, I can add um, some of that in the navy if I don't think it's blue enough. I can just take a little bit on a small brush, which I've got just some to the side. And if I want to just make it a little bit bluer, I can just mix that in as well. All right, now you see that's getting more to where I wanted it to go, but it is still a bit grey. So I'm going to keep on playing with the mixture until I'm fairly sort of happy with the black or bluey black anyway. Okay, I'm just about there, I think. So let's just add a little bit more of that in the navy. Bit more. Let's go whole hog. <laughs> because why not? That's the sort of midnight blue that I was thinking about. Okay, so I'm going to mix up as much of that as I can on my paint mat. And I'm going to add some water to it anyway. So it wants to be a bit watery. Okay. That's more like it. So I'm going to start adding some of that colour around. Okay. Even when you've done these sort of canvases a lot, you always have a little bit of a crisis of confidence as far as colours concerned. Because you've put a lot of time and effort into these things. And then for them not to kind of work out the way you wanted to, it's kind of disheartening. So. I can understand, I mean, if I feel that way, if you've never really had a go at doing a canvas like this, then I can imagine it would be very, very daunting. When I first started doing them, you know, I was absolutely terrified. So let's start adding some water. That's it. I need to get fair bit and then start swirling it round, getting it worked. Into all the areas, I'm trying to avoid getting it onto um, the insects as much. To pick out as much kind of detail everywhere else. 
like I said, don't be frightened. If it doesn't turn out how you expect, then you can, like I said before, always go back in and paint over it with white or black gesso. It's no biggie. So I need to get as much kind of water in there. I want it fluid, I want it moving. There we go. Let's tip it and see if we can get it to run a bit. Yes, that's more like it. I want it picking up some of that texture in the background as well. So when you see it start to run towards the top and then run down back down again towards the bottom, there we go. It's just started to come off the bottom there. That's fine. There we go. Get a bit of drippage. Yeah, it's just starting. Okay. Fingers are filthy, obviously. Right. We'll get that dried and then I'll be back. Okay, so we've got that Williamsburg blue kind of, you can see it's starting to um, flow into all the kind of like little detail in that background. So I want to add, it's starting to look a little bit too light for me. I have got this metallic black, so I'm going to add some of that now. Um, just exactly the same sort of way that I did with the other stuff. Without this time, I'm going to water it down first. So this is um, Raven Black, I think it's called from Indigo Blue. So add some, so it has got elements of silver in it already. Okay, so a fair bit. Yeah, you can see the silver mica just like coming to the surface in the water. Which is quite nice. So what I want to do is I actually want to go in and just start picking out some of the detail on the insect. So they will go fairly silvery. So let's go over the top. You can already see as it's starting to reflect the light. It's not just because it's wet. Um, it's reflecting the light into the camera. So you can actually start to see some of that shimmer on those insects. Let's get that into the background there. I also want to just pick up a few of the areas kind of around as well. Maybe just on that scallop up there and the little fleur kind of thing down at the bottom here. I'm not going to go too mad. I will be adding more colour to this. This is just kind of like a base coat. Just add some to those stars. That little heart down there at the bottom. Just a little bit of the detail. Just in a few areas. I 
where that Williamsburg has kind of like settled in. Um, and I think it's too light. I'm just going to quickly go over it a little bit. Leave it in the background, but actually on the uh, the raised 3D elements, just want to take it off a little bit. All right, so let's pick that up. That's more like it. That's looking a bit more like what I was kind of going for. So I'm trying to push the brush into the detail. That's it. Not really dry brushing, but actually pushing it in. Dry brushing, you normally just take um, the top, the surface area. I'm trying to get it into the detail. Okay, I think I'm happy with that for the time being. So tidy, clean, and I'll be right back. Okay, time to add some surface sparkle. So I've got the Art Alchemy Old Silver. I did say I wanted to do a kind of silvery nighttime kind of affair give it that kind of look so what i'm going to do is i'm going to load up a little of the silver on the brush and then just start to go over just carefully against the grain picking out that silvery detail. So this is going to be a little bit of a slow process. I'm going to take it easy. But you can already see Oh, it's picking up that light. And I'll be moving the canvas around so I can get exactly where I need to be with the brush. <laughs> Mr. Bentley's just woke up. I know that's Mr. Bentley because Nipper's sat in his bed behind me. And then on this little heart here. You can see how just the detail starts to appear. Bit of a slow process. One which is quite rewarding, a very, very um, satisfying when all the detail kind of starts to reveal itself. Lovely stuff. So I'm going to be very, very careful, not get a lot on the brush and go across the grain. So it's only picking up the mountains, if you like, not going into the, the valleys. Keep the brush as flat. Have you got fleas, Mr. Bentley? There's a lot of flapping of ears going on.
just take tiny tiny bits of the silver at a time As the old saying goes, slow and steady wins the race. So I'll just turn back around and start picking up a bit of this side. Keeping the brush as flat as I can to avoid getting the bristles into those valleys, just so it's picking up the top. Okay, so I will finish off, put some music on, and I'll join with you again when I'm ready for stage two, or stage three, whatever it is, <laughs> four or five maybe. <laughs> okay, so I've gone over everything now, including including the insects and as you can see that detail now has been picked up beautifully but of course because it's reflecting um off the lighting in my craft room i'm probably pretty sure all you're really getting is just maybe like a silvery well it is silvery but just kind of like a whitish <laughs> kind of reflection back off it um but I'm really, really happy with the way that's kind of turned out today. Um, but I do want to add just a little, a little touch of colour just into the wings on the, the insects. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some interference pigment powders if I can find them. I know I've got them. <laughs> I've got a set of four, I think. I've got an interference violet, green blue um and I, I'm, I don't even know whether there's a red in there but let me find them and then let me have a tidy clean up and then i'll be right back okay so i've just discovered my camera stopped recording so let me just do a quick recap the iridescent shimmer you can see on the, the dragonfly and on the butterfly and just a little bit with the green on the moth wings there are uh, the indigo blue um, interference luscious powders. So I've got blue cast, I've got violet cast, which is the pink, and I've got green cast. And I've mixed them up with a little bit of the indigo blue gilding gum, which is white when it's down um, in liquid form. And when it dries, it goes completely clear. So I was just trying to expand. I didn't realise that my um, camera had shut off so i'll just quickly um show you adding the blue so these little piles on my desktop here are the powders i've mixed a little bit of the gilding gum with the interference powders and as you can see when you add the color it turns that beautiful kind of blue shade A little bit of blue just down there, and I'm dabbing in and as I was saying, but I didn't realize that the camera had shut off is that 
um, it does cover the wax. So don't worry about it not and not acting like a resist, it doesn't. So I've added the blue to the wings there and there. I've added some of the violet cast there and then the green cast down towards the middle. So we've got a real nice kind of mixture of that iridescent colour shining through. And I haven't added any of the, the violet or the blue onto the moth down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to do that now. Add the blue along there, just while I've got enough. Like so, and like I said, it does, because they're translucent, because they're, they're dry clear, then um, you can layer them, you can blend them. So let me just get some more of the gilding gum. Like so. And then just take a little bit and then I want the violet cast, which is the pink. There we go, just mix it up. And then I'm just going to go in and do those little areas there. Maybe just a little touch across the top. There and there. Just so that all three of those little creatures I've got some of that beautiful kind of iridescence and I can just go back in and just reapply if I just want to strengthen some of the colours like so love that love it love it love it okay I'm just give them a second or two to dry I'll have a clear up and then I'll come back again Okay, so everything is now dry and you can see that iridescence on the wings. And that's actually turned out a lot better than even I thought it would. So I'm really, really happy with the way that canvas has turned out today. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me create it too. So if you have enjoyed it, please support the channel by giving it a thumbs up because it really does help. Um, don't forget you can share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video that's all from me for now i've just got to find a frame to pop this in now <laughs> bye for now I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.